Hey there, Jan Koretkas here for Cord Cutters, the show that brings you the future of television today. On this episode, we are taking a first look at the WD TV Play, a new device from WD that is supposed to sell for $70. It has a simplified UI, it focuses on online services, and it squarely aims at a Roku, I think, for that price point. Let's see how it stacks up and whether it's worth a buy. This is a close-up of the WDTV Play and the remote control. And before we take a look at all the parts and everything the unit offers, let's actually take a look, closer look at this remote control because I was pleasantly surprised by it. Um, it is kind of plasticky. It feels kind of light. You see it slides under my hand here already, uh, which is kind of what you expect from a device that has this price point. But I was pleasantly surprised by some of the things here. And one of the neat features is, first of all, the design kind of has, it's rounded, it doesn't feel kind of clunky and square in your hand. And then it has this rubberized ribbon all around the remote control, which adds a nice design touch to it. But it also kind of prevents the remote control from falling out of your hand, at least most of the time. So I thought it was actually kind of neat. I could do without some of those buttons here. I don't need a setup button on my remote control and I don't access the setup every day. But overall, I was pleasantly surprised by this remote control. Moving on to the device itself, um, it doesn't have much that sets it apart from other players in this space. They're all kind of black now, they all have rounded corners, they all sort of look like an Apple TV, but not really. Well, with one big exemption here, one more time, once again, it also has this blue a ribbon which they have done by just putting taking the whole bottom making the whole bottom blue and so if it stands on your uh, TV stand it kind of gives it a nice blue shine it's actually kind of neat now what does it offer other than the design well in terms of media ports or media extension capabilities there's not that much we have one USB port on this side and that's pretty much it there's no other USB port in the back and none here. So that's, if you want to connect the USB drive, you basically just have one option for that. In the back, however, you have a bunch of different connectors here, which is nice and sets it apart from some of its competition. Uh, on the very left here, we have power. Then we have AV out. So if you want to connect one of those old televisions, like a big boob tube that doesn't have HDMI in, you can use that for it. And it actually comes with the cable for that in the box as well. It has one HDMI port, doesn't come with the HDMI cable, so you have to buy that yourself, unfortunately. Then it has Ethernet, which I think one can't stretch too much. Many people have problems with Wi-Fi in their house. Plug your devices in, that's the best way to get around this. And Ethernet port obviously is necessary for that. And finally, it has optical audio out for all your audio needs if you home, have a home theater set up. This is the home screen of the new WD TV Play. As you can see, they have some favorite apps here queued up and it has all the big ones. It has YouTube, Spotify, Netflix, Hulu Plus, Vudu, Vimeo. So it has some subscription offerings, some video on demand, free content. And if you want to watch more, they have the sidebar here on the left now with this new UI. So they have your favorite, they have premium video services, then they have web videos. So it has offerings like AOL HD, uh, YouTube, Daily Motion, stuff like that, and uh, music services, including Spotify, and then radio, online radio services, essentially. Uh, if you continue here a little bit, there's going to be photos, or it's, it's Picasso and Flickr, it's not that many offered here, but it's the basics. And uh, then a couple of games and a couple of news things as well. Somewhat disappointing is that they have still the old school YouTube app, YouTube 4 TV on here, not the newer design that is available on the PlayStation or on the boxy TV devices. This is just kind of looks a little clunky. You can still customize it and you can also then if you pair devices with it, that helps a lot to then send videos from, from your mobile phones here, but it's still a little clunky. The Netflix app, on the other hand, is new, which means that it has the regular Netflix experience, or if you have kids in your household, then you can also launch just for kids on this device and get this completely new just for kids UI on your TV, which is pretty nice if you want to have them browse Netflix in a safe environment and also just find shows by characters and stuff like that. Now, if you have one of the previous WD players, if you've seen our previous reviews for the WD TV Live, for example, 
you might ask yourself, so what's the big difference here? Well, it's two things. First of all, the UI is different. It's simplified. It's supposed to be easier for first-time users. And then they put a bigger emphasis on these online services and slightly less on local files. That being said, they also have slightly pared down their codec support. I've been told that MPEG-2 files and some of the other advanced files that people use when they rip Blu-ray discs and things like that aren't supported by this device anymore, but your basics, your DivX, your XVIT, MP4 files still play just fine. So that's the WDTV Play in a nutshell. As I said, suggested retail price is $70, which probably means that it's going to sell for even less and it has a lot to offer for that price. 1080p video, it has a bunch of connectors like Ethernet if you want to hardwire it. It has um, video out for all the TVs if you still have one of the big boot tubes at home. And also the basic apps that you need. It has Netflix, Hulu Plus, YouTube. So if you want a basic player that gives you the basic apps for a good price point, a good overall package, you should definitely take a look at this one.